Hey guys, Dean Chase here with another geometry lesson for you. Hope everybody's doing awesome. Let's go ahead and start this thing with a word of prayer. Dearly Father, thank you for this day you give us, Lord. Thank you for all the wonderful things you do for us. I pray you'll be with my students, bless them, help them gain understanding, and help me do the best job I can possible. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So, today we're going to be learning about the mid-segment theorem and coordinate proof. This is lesson 5.1, page 295. Welcome to chapter five, guys, let's get going. So, a mid-segment of a triangle is a segment that connects the midpoint of two sides of the triangle. Every triangle has three mid-segments. So here they go ahead and give you a picture of this, you guys. Um, here's the triangle. M, P, and N are the midpoints, so the lines connecting them are the mid-segments. Let's keep going and learn something interesting about mid-segments. Mid-segment theorem. The segment connecting the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side and is half as long as that side. So DF is going to be parallel to AC and also DF is half the length of AC. So here we go. In the diagram of an A-frame house, DG and DH are the mid-segments of triangle ABF. They want us to find DG and BF. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight this triangle in yellow because it's way easier to see over this house. So here's our triangle. And we're looking at DH. Oh, sorry, not DH. We're looking at BF, which is the long side here. And we are also looking at DG. By the way, whenever I hear DG, instantly think of disc golf. Love it. Wish I was out playing right now. Anyways, so to find the length of DG, we know that it's going to be half the length of the side it's parallel to because DG is the mid-segment, okay? So DG is parallel to AF, and if we follow these lines down right here, we know that AF is going to be 12 feet. So half of that would be six feet. DG is six feet. Okay, BF is the longer side. So to find it, we need to go to its mid-segment right here. DH is a mid-segment parallel to BF. And we know that DH is 10 feet. So DH is half of BF. So if we were to double this, we would have 20 feet. Um, hope that makes sense. Uh, not a super hard example, just got to know what a mid-segment is and its properties. So make sure you go back a slide or rewind the video and write that in your notes. So in the diagram, RS is congruent to TS and RW is congruent to VW. Show that VT is congruent to WS. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and write our givens down. Okay. We know that RS is congruent to TS and RW is congruent to VW. Okay. Um, which makes S and W the midpoints of those lines. Okay. So let's go ahead. So S and W are the midpoints of RT and RV. Okay, if we know those are the midpoints, we know that the line connecting those two midpoints is going to be the mid segment of triangle RVT, this outer triangle. So, um, and SW is a mid segment of triangle RTV. Okay, so SW is a mid segment. And ultimately, we're trying to prove that VT, this line here, I'll draw it in red, this line is parallel to WS, the blue line. And we know by the mid-segment theorem that the mid-segment is congruent to the side um, it's parallel with, or it's parallel to the triangle's base. Uh, let's go back. Um, I'll read the mid-segment theorem again, sorry. this uh, The segment connecting the midpoints of two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side and is half as long as that side. So we know it's parallel to the third side. That's the right wording, okay? So it connects these two sides, so it's parallel to the third side. So 
since we know SW is a mid-segment, we can say that VT is parallel to WS by the mid-segment theorem. Okay? Not bad. Not a hard example. Um, may seem kind of hard just trying to figure out where you're going to start that, but that's why we do these proofs, these examples, so you start developing that logical thinking. I'm sure you're probably sick of hearing me say that by now, but I'm gonna keep saying it. So let's keep on rolling. So a coordinate proof. A coordinate proof involves placing geometric figures in a coordinate plane. When you use variables to represent the coordinates of the figure in a coordinate proof, the results are true for all figures of that type. So here we go. Um, they want us, sorry about this overlap, place a square and a right triangle in a coordinate plane in a way that is convenient for finding its side lengths. Assign coordinates to each vertex. So the first thing I'm going to do, and it'll probably be a sloppily drawn square, but we're going to place a square here. So I'm going to go here, um, and then go down. Okay, that looks pretty square. Now we know a square has the same lengths all around it. So we know that this is obviously the origin. But if we want to use a variable instead of a number, we would know that this still lies on the y axis, okay? So its x value is gonna be zero, okay? Um, zero comma, and let's call it h for um, its height. Okay, we also know that this lies on its x-axis, but is the same distance, so it would have the same variable. So it would be h comma o, since it's zero on the y, y value, but it could be anything on the h scale. I mean, the x-axis um, is long as it's the same distance up as it is out, which means that this value would be h comma h okay because it's h up and h over okay now let's go ahead and use this point right here as one of our points on our right triangle and we're just going to pick another random point here okay and we're going to connect those and sorry i should have drawn lines on the axis this too um this is going to be our right triangle okay and its point for this point can still be OH and its origin is still 0, 0. But this point is no longer H out. So we're gonna have to pick a different variable to call that. And let's go ahead and call that K. So we'll call that K comma zero. Um, this is just placing shapes in a blank coordinate plane and assigning variables instead of numbers. That's all we're doing, okay? And we can, we can prove things from this, okay? Um, and we're actually gonna we're gonna do that a little bit in the next example. Okay. So, example four: place a rectangle in a coordinate plane, then find the length of the diagonal and the coordinates of the midpoint M of the diagonal. Okay. So I'm gonna place a rectangle in here. Okay. Um, draw these lines too. Um, and we got a, this is zero comma zero cause it's the origin and we're going to say it goes, uh, K out. Okay. So K comma zero is going to be this point right here. And we're going to say it goes H up. So zero H right here. Now, what would you label this point? Well, it's H up and K out. So it'd be k comma h okay now they want us to uh what did they say they want us to do they want us to find the length of the diagonal so first we need to draw a diagonal right here this diagonal they want us to find the length of it and we're going to use the distance formula to do that and they want us to find the midpoint m which is going to be oh man sorry about that let me redraw that all right now that i got that redrawn um, they want us to find the distance and the midpoint. Um, to do that, we um, are going to use the distance formula where 
d equals the square root of x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. Okay, um, that's the distance formula. And we're also going to use the midpoint formula, which is m equals x1 plus x2 over 2 and y1 plus y2 over 2 because we're finding the averages of the x's and y's. So to plug in these values, it's going to be, we could say k minus 0 for these points, k minus 0 squared, and 0 minus h squared. So uh, you know what, I'll just go ahead and write it down. Um, d equals square root um, k minus 0 squared plus um, 0 minus h squared. Well, that's going to leave us with d equals k squared plus minus h squared. Well, minus h squared just be, oh, the square root of that, by the way. Minus h squared just becomes h squared. So d equals square root of k squared plus um, h squared. And that is just your answer for distance. And that's it, you guys. You don't have to solve it past that. It's actually a pretty simple answer. Um, and then for the midpoint, m is going to equal, once again, x is added together, so 0 plus k over 2. And our y values is going to be h plus 0 um, over 2 which our midpoint is going to equal k over 2 comma h over 2. Okay, and that is our midpoint and that's it. That's all you have to solve it. You're not looking for like number value problems. That's what doing a coordinate proof kind of looks like. I'm actually going to do a coordinate proof in example five. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So here they've already placed the coordinates for us and labeled them. They want us to write coordinate proof of the mid-segment theorem for the mid-segment parallel to OB. So what they want us to do is they want us to prove that FE is parallel to OB, okay? And that FE is one half of OB. So we're gonna have to find the slope of OB and FE, and we're also gonna have to find the length of OB and FE. So, we're going to find, first off, we're going to find the midpoints F and E. And we can do that by using the midpoint theorem or the midpoint formula on BC and also OC. So I'm going to go ahead and um, throw that out there. The midpoints are E is Q plus P R and F is P zero. Okay. And real quick, I'm going to work through, I'll work through E for you real quick um, where the midpoint of E equals um, 2Q plus 2P over 2 comma 2R plus 0 over 2 and that's what they did to solve that well the 2's are going to cancel out so this 2 cancels out all those 2's cancel out so we're then be left with M equals Q plus P comma these twos cancel out, and it's r plus zero, which is just gonna be r, okay? And that's how we got that. You could do the same thing for op, the two cancels out, and you're left with a zero here, because two p plus zero is just two p, the twos cancel out, zero plus zero is zero, divide by two, still zero, okay? That's how we did that. Now, we wanna find the slopes. Well, we find slope by change in y and change in r. So this went from 0 to 2q, 0 to 2r. So our 2s are going to cancel out, and it's just going to be r over q. Um, that's the slope for OB. Um, we could do the same thing here um, with their points. Um, the p's, 
So if we wrote this as a fraction, and I'll do that up here, we wrote Q, oh sorry, it's change and rise, which is R minus zero over Q plus P minus P, okay? The P's are gonna cancel out, the zero means nothing, so we're left with RQ there also. So that's really good news that their slopes are the same. So let's go ahead and write that. The slope of both FE and OB is RQ, so we know that FE is parallel to OB. Boom, that's what we wanted to know. Now, the last thing they want to know is prove that FE is one half of OB. And to do that, we're just gonna plug in our coordinates into the distance formula. And when we do that, Fe is going to come out to equal Q squared plus R squared, and OB is going to come out to equal 2 square root of Q squared plus R squared. Okay? Um, and you do that by plugging into a distance formula like we did on the last slide. I'm not going to take your time because I know your time is precious. But we know that if we were to put this compared to this, the square root of q squared plus r squared compared to two square root q squared plus r squared is gonna be, it, well, let's go ahead and just put those in a fraction real quick. Square root q squared plus r squared over two square root q squared plus r squared. The square roots are gonna cancel out and there's an imaginary one out front, so we're left with one half. So we know that Fe is one half of OB. And that is today's whole lesson. Um, whew, I hope that made sense. I hope that wasn't too stressful. Um, I know that was a lot to cover. Um, the good news is chapter five actually gets easier after this lesson, which is rare. But just keep watching, keep paying attention. Go ahead and feel free to like and subscribe. And you know what, you guys? Have a good day. See ya!